can anybody tell me why it is that there's always one screw that's an absolute asshole? Here we are with the 64 Super Reverb. It did not want to come apart. Everything inside this thing was so crusty and rusty. There's the remainder of the label. Paint, rust, and crust all over this thing. Some Tolex that came off the bottom front here. Yeah, she's she's definitely worse for wear, but I like a challenge. I'm gonna work on cleaning this part up. In this picture, you can see that the Tolex is completely gone from the bottom of the amp. It's just been worn away over time and damaged from moving the amp around. The little shred that you just saw in the video before this was the only remaining piece of Tolex on the bottom. Also, the corners were so rusted that they had rusted the Tolex beneath them. There was just rust everywhere. I really wish I would have taken a before picture. Right here is where my heartbreak begins. This is a picture of the front panel, which is obviously chipboard, which means that this is not the original front baffle for this amp either. An original pre-CBS amp would have had a real plywood front panel, not chipboard. And then I got to looking at the grill cloth and noticing a little bit of blue in it after I cleaned it a bit. And it occurred to me that it looks like at some point he took the entire front panel from a silver face super reverb and just surplanted it into this amp so anyway that was my first moment of heartbreak but definitely not my last it was at this point that i had taken the amp to terry dayton at d lab electronics which d lab has a youtube channel and he just happens to live a few miles up the road from me so i took the amp down to him where it was noted that it was not the original power transformer which was absolutely heartbreaking to me not because the amp did not sound fantastic because it did but because now i realize that if i ever want to make this amp right i have to find a 1964 date stamp code schumacher 2 ohm output transformer which may not be the easiest of task so if you're out there in the world with one in your possession i sure would like you to contact me also let's just look at this picture again real quick and take note of this giant burn mark on the shielding that was probably from the bias running wild a tube red plating and most likely is the cause of the death of the original transformer Again, it's really not a big deal. The one they replaced it with is a 2 ohm and it's more than powerful enough for this particular circuit. It works and it sounds great. And I did not buy this amp as a flip. I bought it because I've always wanted a true pre-CBS Fender. Now, the last bit of semi heartbreak not really heartbreak but just semi was learning that the amp is actually a very early 65. the filter capacitors under the doghouse were original and they were dated march of 1965 which means this was one of the last amps made at the Fender factory before it was sold to CBS. And by the way, before anyone craps a brick, I do have all of the old parts in case I did ever decide to sell it. My baby is back from the doctor. She has new power tubes, a couple of new preamp tubes. A couple of those were dead. There's brand new filter capacitors under the doghouse. I'm not going to take that off and show you. Frozen intensity pot was replaced with a vintage one. Unfortunately, we did learn that the output transformer is incorrect. I did not notice the screws when I first bought it, but it is definitely not a Schumacher. But eventually I will find an original Schumacher and have it replaced. All the other transformers are original. That was a bit of a bummer to find out. You know, the amp sounds killer and I don't plan on selling it, 
this is going to stay with me for a long time. I'm going to rip it. Okay, guys, not sure if I explained this yet, but I had one blown speaker. The one that was there was totally seized up. I just got the amp back from D-Lab after the cap job. Unfortunately, I found out that I had a blown speaker. So they're all out now and new ones are about to go in. I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you this. Here's how you can tell if your speaker is completely blown. So here is the Eminence replacement speaker that was in the Super Reverb. And as you can see, the cone moves up and down when I flex it. I hope that's coming through. But you can see that that cone moves. Now, if I take this Jensen that's totally blown and you look at the cone, I can press substantially harder and the cone, you can see my fingers pushing the paper, but the cone itself is not moving at all. So that means that the voice coil in here is totally froze up and this speaker is blown. The new speakers are installed. They are Jensen C10Q. They're 35 watts instead of 25 watts which would have been in here originally, but I like the speakers to stay a little cleaner, have a little firmer bottom end, so I went with the 35 waters. Here's another interesting little tidbit. This has a Gibbs reverb tank in it. And when I first was testing this amp, I noticed that the reverb didn't sound as strong as it should have. And I thought that that was probably a tube well, it turns out that what was causing the reverb to sound like that was this decal, which was under the springs and curled up, basically wrapping around the reverb tank springs. As you can see, the springs were rubbing it pretty badly. I ended up taking the decal out and I'm going to put it in an envelope with all the information about the date the amp was serviced and some information about the original owner for the day that I do decide to sell it so that everything can still be there. Here are the gliders or amp feet, if you will. They were much worse than this. This is actually after soaking in white vinegar. And as you can probably see, I started taking a wire wheel to a couple of them. I've decided in the long run that these are going to go in the parts box and these are not going to go back on the amplifier. All right, so here are the corner protectors. As you can see, they were extremely rusted, especially this one, which has practically disappeared. These have been treated with uh, Permatex anti-rust treatment. These were cleaned first in white vinegar to remove the rust as much as possible. And then they were sprayed with the Permatex just to keep them alive. That's it. I'm not trying to make them look pretty, obviously. I'm just trying to stop the rust. So yeah, they were horrible. And honestly, this is a large improvement as to what they were. I really wish I would have done a uh, before again close up because these were pretty much all rust. Anywhere you see chrome is about the only chrome that was left. Otherwise, it was pure rust. Now we're down to metal. This is the before of the lower back panel. All right, you guys. So this is the upper panel, which I had to rebuild because the wood was chipped out pretty heavily through here and here. So I put back every piece I could with super glue and use wood putty to fill out the rest so this could go back together. And then all of this Tolex was torn off. This whole end was flopping around. So got a little contact cement and resealed all of that. And here is the upper back panel after it's been cleaned up. All right, you guys. So the 65 we found out Fender Super Reverb Pre-CBS Blackface is all back together. And this is where it's going to stay, at least for now, until I have a little bit more money to put into it, until I can find a proper 1964 Schumacher 
2 ohm output transformer to have put in it. Here is what the back is looking like. As you can see, the speakers have been replaced. It's been cleaned up as much as I could. I think it looks a lot better. Definitely sounds a lot better after the cap job. That is it for now. And tomorrow, I will have a demo of it up. Fully mic'd and hopefully sounding really great. I've been playing it for about an hour and it seems very solid. It sounds wonderful, by the way. So yeah, let's, let's see how she sounds. Be on the lookout for the final demo of this amp. Until then, peace. Take it easy. Thank you.